Michael with Mercedes Benz of Collierville. Thank you so much again for tuning in for another one of my videos. In today's video, we're going to be covering the GLC 300 2021. So let's go. driver's side door you've got your memory seating this is how you're going to adjust your seat settings to how you feel safe and comfortable to drive home and once you get your seat settings side view mirrors and your steering wheel exactly how you like you're just going to press this m and then one m stands for memory and that audible beep means you just saved your seat settings steering wheel and side view mirrors into memory so if you have multiple drivers of a vehicle you can save up to three this right here is your seat heater sound system, unlock lock, all of your windows are automatic, and this is a child lock for the windows in the back. This is a trunk opener right here, pull it to open it, push it and hold it to close it. All right, over here on the left side of your steering wheel, you have your fog lights here. This is just letting you know that your headlights are on automatic, so you never have to worry about turning those on or off. This little roller ball is a brightness level adjuster for your display screens for after the sun has gone down. And then if you reach down here, you have your parking brake, pull to release, push to activate, but it automatically activates and releases itself. So you actually don't have to worry about it. And then if you reach all the way down here, there's a red lever that you can actually pull and that is gonna pop your hood. And then over here, we have our windshield wiper. This is how you turn them on automatic. This is extra sensitive. And then this is a low setting and this is a high setting. Now I usually just leave mine on this three dots here. That means whenever water hits my windshield, it automatically starts wiping. Your windshield is also pressure sensitive. So you never have to worry about turning them on, off or adjusting their speed. They'll do all that for you. Push this up for that back windshield wiper. And then this silver button here on the end is for your windshield washer fluid. Then you have your power steering here, push that up, down, back to adjust your steering wheel. So on the left side of your steering column, you have got your home button, which you can swipe this little touchpad here to see different things and change what's in the center display here. You can also swipe up and down to see different information on the vehicle. And then you have a back button. This just brings you to the previous screen that you were in. And then over here, our cruise control is here. This is how you'll turn it on. And that's how you'll turn it off. And this is how you'll set it. Faster, slower, zoom, and cancel. First thing you do when you get your new 2021 GLC 300 is you wanna Bluetooth connect your phone. So we have three different ways to control this screen. We've got our trackpad, our mini trackpad over here on the right side of our steering column. And then we've got the big trackpad right here. And we can actually touch our screen. So what we're gonna do is we'll go into settings on our phone and open up Bluetooth. Click on phone, connect a new device, and it immediately recognizes my phone. Wait for the signal, pair and allow those contacts to go in so you know who's calling you whenever someone calls you. And you can press this down to decline their call or up to accept their call. And if you wanna make a phone call, you can push your voice control up and say call so-and-so and it will call them for you. And if you're someone who likes to listen to podcasts or Apple Music, YouTube, Pandora, Spotify, every time you go into media now, it's gonna be automatically Bluetooth connected to your device. So you can press play on anything you want on your phone and it's gonna automatically come through the vehicle. Okay, now we're in radio and say we like 97.7 and we wanna save that as a preset. We just, while we're on it, we can assign it to a number. It's that simple. And if you accidentally save one, you can press and hold and delete the preset. Then I'm just using my trackpad down here to swipe left or right and change those radio stations. A lot of the times I just press this here and it actually gets you through the stations much quicker. Then we have engine data, how many horsepower and how many pounds foot torque. A graph to show you how many miles per gallon you're consuming and a digital operator's manual, which you can click on and it will load and you can do keyword searches that will give you step-by-step -step tutorials on how to do things. 
we have the Mercedes Me and Apps. This is basically, whenever you click on it, it's just gonna let you know that you are in control of the Mercedes Me Connect app, which is capable of remote starting your vehicle, locker unlocking your vehicle, and you can monitor tire pressures, um, when your next service is due, where your vehicle's located, valet protect, you can even control things like ambient lighting. This right here is just letting you know that there's no device connected for the Apple CarPlay. In the center console, you just push the center button right here. It's gonna pop right open. And you have two USB-C ports. The one on the left side is just for charging, but the one on the right with the two little squares, that is the phone integration symbol. That's where you plug in and Apple CarPlay will activate. So as soon as you plug into this USB-C port right here with the two little squares, that's the phone integration symbol, not only is your your phone going to charge but it will completely change the face of the screen to mirror your iPhone and basically puts everything that I just taught you on a platform that you're already familiar with then we have vehicle settings so assistance camera and parking basically just letting you know like you can set your worn early tones you can set how loud it is so when you're pulling into your garage say you're getting kind of close to something how loud those warning tones are the beeping all that um and then you have your active brake assist which if your vehicle thinks you're going to rear end the car in front of you it's going to actively start braking for you you'll hear three beeps and by that third beep if you haven't braked it will and then you have attention assist so over the next few weeks this vehicle is going to be recording your driving habits so say one day maybe you're a little distracted and you're overcorrecting more than usual it will send you this little coffee cup on your command screen and say hey you're not being yourself maybe you should pull over and take a break and then you have your blind spot assist, which are the triangles in your side view mirrors. If someone's in your blind spot, they're gonna highlight red, and if you put your blinker on and go on that lane anyway, the vehicle will start alerting you. Then we have our vehicle settings here, which dynamic select. So that's what this right here is, right next to your trackpad in the top left corner, and you can push this up or down at any time. Now, if you were wondering what the little C meant in your center display area over here that means comfort mode and comfort set by default but when you push this up or down you can change eco will save you the most on gas comfort is the smoothest most comfortable ride for you sport's gonna make your gas pedal more sensitive steering column stiffer and suspension stiffer and then sport plus is basically that times 10. i'm gonna put it back in comfort for now then you have your easy entry exit which I usually activate for all my customers. So whenever they turn their engine off and open their driver door, steering wheel will slide up and the seat will roll back to make more room for them to get in and out of the vehicle. Then you have your belt adjustments, which is like a little hug for Mercedes whenever you lock your seatbelt in, just making sure that there's no slack in the seatbelt. And then you have your acoustic lock. This is basically just letting you know that you locked your vehicle. And then your automatic door lock, which means that all the doors will automatically lock whenever you reach a speed of 10 miles per hour or higher. And then automatic mirror folding. Of course, we want that on. That just means whenever you get out and hit that lock button, those mirrors are gonna automatically fold in. And then our light settings. So after you turn your engine off, how long would you like your exterior and interior lights to stay on for? Now, normally factory setting, it comes at 30 seconds, but that makes me feel like I didn't shut off my electronics. So I usually suggest around 15 seconds and that's how long your interior lights will stay as well. Daytime running lights are those beautiful LED strips. Of course, you wanna keep those activated and your locator lighting, I would suggest leaving it activated as well. Just means anytime you hit that unlock button on your key after the sun has gone down, all of those exterior lights are gonna come on so you know exactly where your vehicle is located. Then system. Normally, people like their display brightness on a base level of two, but like I told you before, on the left side of the steering wheel, over there on that side where you adjust the headlights, there's that roller ball that you can adjust that display brightness. Controls, of course you want these touch pads on medium. I don't recommend touch pad tap, it's a little overly sensitive. Um, so basically, that just means anytime like I wanna select something with the touchpad, I press it down like a button and I feel the click of the button when I select something. If you enable touchpad tap, anytime you even just barely touch the trackpad, it automatically selects whatever you're on. I've not had the best feedback on that. And then all this clicking, 
you can turn off the clicking audio, but you still have the acoustic feedback in your trackpad, which I do prefer. Then, once your app is activated from whichever dealer you buy, they'll activate that app and what that app does, that does the remote start, lock and unlock, all that, it also gives the Hey Mercedes internet access. She heard me. So basically, once that app is connected and fully activated, this will say activated, and that means she has internet access and she can do pretty much anything at that point. Then audio, entertainment. So I usually set my bass at three, my mid tones at five, and my treble at seven. There we go. That looks good. Just want to make sure ringtone volume. I usually put the ringtone volume at 25 just because when someone calls you, every screen notifies you, including your phone. Your phone starts ringing, the car starts ringing. Um, you don't need to be blasted with a ringtone. <laughs> and then 45 is usually what I average out. People are most comfortable with when they first initially answer the phone when someone calls, how loud that person is on the other line. This is how loud the Hey Mercedes voice is. About 30. And for all your warning tones, I normally just put these up at five. Because it's pretty important. Then you have your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth which if you ever want to activate it, you can just press this me button right here. It will directly connect you with a concierge and you say, I want to activate the Wi-Fi hotspot in my vehicle. And then they'll transfer you to the people that will activate that for you. And they'll ask you questions like if you want 10 gigabytes a month or unlimited hotspot data, that type of thing. And then time and date. So we are actually wrong right now. So let's set this time. Go USA and the Central Standard. There we go. And your daylight savings time is set to automatic, so you won't actually have to worry about setting the time or date in the vehicle again. Language, English, units, miles per hour, not kilometers, and everything else in system settings is all for service, so you don't have to really worry about all that. Alrighty. So that's all of the main things within this display screen to get you started. And then you have your climate system, which is also pretty important. Now, I usually recommend people just press the menu button in the middle anytime they wanna adjust their climate system, just because it takes everything that's right here and puts it up here. The symbols are bigger, and I just think it's a lot easier to adjust your climate system. Pretty self-explanatory there. And then you have hard buttons for everything that's in your home screen. So like if I just wanted to immediately get to telephone, I can just press the telephone button. And if I just wanted to get back to vehicle settings, I can press the vehicle settings. Then you can push this right here. It's gonna pop right open. You have an ashtray and cup holders here. Volume, which you can also press it in like a button for mute. Same with the one on the right side of your steering column. You can turn your display screen off with this button here. This is your parallel park assist. You press this button when you're driving through a parking lot. When the vehicle finds a parking spot, it'll show it on the screen and you'll press authorize park assist. Take your hands off the wheel and follow the directions in your center screen right in front of your steering wheel. This is your ESP. It's gonna take all those horses away from you in case it ever catches you slipping. This is that stop and go assist. So if you've ever felt your engine shut off when you come to a stoplight or stop sign, um, you'll wanna, and that annoys you, you'll wanna press this button. But uh, just a warning, it does come back on by default. It's government required now on all automotive brands. It's to cut down on all of the emissions into the atmosphere. And then you have your M here, which is your manual mode. That's what the paddle shifters behind your steering column are for. You have a minus over here on the left one and a plus over here. That basically means that whenever you put your vehicle into drive, you'll notice in the screen right in front of your steering wheel that the D goes D1, D2, D3. That is because Mercedes automatically shift themselves. But if you wanted to, you could press that M, the D turns to an M, and you could shift up or down. It's like shifting without a clutch. And then you have this P, 
off button. What does that mean? That means that you can turn off your parking sensors. Now, why would we ever want to turn off our parking sensors? Say you're going through a drive through or even a car wash and the vehicle's beeping at you like crazy, but you know what you're doing. You can just press the P off button and it will mute those parking sensors for the time being. Then up here, we have our light settings. So we have our map light. Actually designed to not cause a reflection on your windshield while driving. This middle button here will turn these on right there and off again. This will turn on all the lights in the back of the vehicle and off again. And when this light right here is red, that means your interior lights are off. So I can open a door, no interior lights come on. Only if you physically press a button will any interior lights come on when that red light is on. But if you turn the red light off, that means your interior lights are on automatic mode. So every time I open a car door, my interior lights will automatically come on. And anytime I close them, they'll automatically shut off. And that's usually how people prefer. And then you have your SOS. So you can press that right there and a little red button pops out. You can press that, that's like 911. You can press that if you can't read your phone in order to dial 911 and they'll dial 911 for you and they'll stay on the line with you until emergency personnel arrive. Then your sunnies go here and your beautiful panoramic roof. And then I can pull this back again and this front window is gonna open up, get a little breeze. And then right underneath your rear view mirror, which is manual by the way, standard on all of our vehicles, there is three little flush buttons. That is your garage door programming. And if you're planning on doing that, I have a little advice. Don't read the directions in the manual. They make it much more confusing than what it has to be. I'll leave the link down below to um, a video that MBUSA posted. It's three minutes and 22 seconds long. It shows you exactly how to program your garage door and it's a million times easier. Thank you guys so much for watching another one of my videos. Make sure to like, share, leave a comment below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.